Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here, and welcome to another video of us reviewing uh, the Sexy Beasts uh, Italian Stallions new video, Why FIFA 19 Tackles from Behind or OP. This guy goes into the gameplay, so be sure to subscribe to his channel if you guys haven't already. Right, little nice little button over here. This is the channel right here. We'll leave a link in the description down below uh, for you guys to go check out this video. This video was uploaded three hours ago, 606 views. Makes me so happy. Greetings, and I love you guys so much, man. All right, let's check out the video. Welcome to another video. My name is Italian Stallion. My friends call me Stallion. My anime friends call me Stallion Sama. And uh, today I wanted to talk about tackling and specifically tackling from behind and thus begin a transition into a conversation uh, and we can have in the comment section. You can find me on Twitter and whatever you like on tackles this year and how the whole system, including 50-50 moments, for me was just generally a failure and just a whole tackling system. But before I get into that, I wanted to make something clear because it's starting to reoccur more the more topics I cover because for me when you talk about big concepts in FIFA whether it be defensive AI or tackling or shooting you cannot make a general rule of thumb and just leave it at that you can't just say defensive AI is overpowered and leave it at that because it's much more deeper than that mm -hmm. because each topic consists of many many mechanics yes. many instances many situations so when I say defensive AI is overpowered it's true in regards to defenses dropping back, and when they do drop back cor correctly, it doesn't give you a lot of space. It's true in the sense that when you press the contain button X on PlayStation, A on Xbox, it's too effective. You have the AI mirroring you to perfection without you holding anything other than you know the X button or the A button. And, and it's true in the general sense that sometimes tackles uh, from the AI happen by themselves or interception, blah, 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 whatever you want. But that doesn't mean that the video I made last week, which actually exposes defensive AI, is untrue, right? It's simply one aspect, right? The video I made last week is only one aspect of defensive AI, and that was the runs going backwards. That's the important th thing to take away from these gameplay videos, right? Is that there's no, like it's like he says, when you're saying something specific, it's not the general experience. It's not like it's not like we're saying, oh, defensive AI is overpowered, but then he doesn't like like that video that he's saying where he uh, was analyzing the FIFA 19 defensive mechanics when they make like really stupid lunges and stuff. There's specifics to each category, essentially, is what he's saying from defense, from attacking and stuff like that. The runs destroying the defensive like defensive lines creating uneven defensive lines and thus giving your opponent opportunities to make passes that shouldn't otherwise be happening. The irony here is that the one way in which the defensive AI is weak, is stupid, that I showed last week, is the one way the defensive AI shouldn't act dumb in. It's the one way in which the defensive AI should just hold their ground and stop moving and make you player switch because while it leaves you more exposed for through balls, at least like I showed in the video, it doesn't create useless uh, passing options that you couldn't do anything about, right? So it's the one way in which the defensive AI shouldn't act dumb in and it's the one way which, if the defensive AI acts dumb in, which it does, reduces the skill gap significantly. And there are other ways for the AI defensive to be toned down, toned down more, which would help the skill gap. Uh, so again, I can say defensive AI is OP, but also at the same time say it's not good enough in certain aspects like last week. It's a very broad subject like most in FIFA, so you cannot make these general rules of thumbs. These two different opposing sides that I made, right? Are not contradictions again you just have to look at the videos i make the clip clips i provide and make the distinction between which instances yes. specifically i talk to which yes. parts of defensive ai specifically am i talking to about right and make the distinction an important thing that i want to make clear is that the reason these tackles from behind don't make sense in fifa 19 is that defensive ai is already so annoying to face as a result of touches being bad mm -hmm. as a result of shielding being bad mm -hmm. as a result of gameplay being really sluggish mm -hmm. so when someone presses drop back Beautiful. as an option and on top of that they can tackle you from behind there's like, how are you going to left stick dribble anywhere, right? You can't do that. So yep. it doesn't make sense for tackles from behind to work the way they do in FIFA 19 when everything else is so bad in terms of dribbling and touches and gameplay. Because at that point, the attacker is... This guy's my brother, bro. I swear to God, we're basically bloodline. He's like, what, what, he's thinking, what do I do? What do I do to get past this barricade? So that's the point <laughs> I want to make, which... Bring... <laughs> get past this barricade. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> but that's the point I want to make, which brings me to today's video, which is tackling the ball. Tackling the ball in this game is both effective and ineffective. And uh, the key is differ differentiating between which instances are effective and which are ineffective and whether or not you think that's right. So when you fa manually tackle people head on from the front, the general feeling this year for me is that you're not rewarded as much as you should be. Yep. Which is why oftentimes you'll you'll have a headache because your opponent's attacking you if you felt that like you've made several decent challenges, but that he still has the ball. Let me show you a perfect example of that. Let me see if I can get this clip really quickly before we continue with the video. I want to show you guys. I was reviewing Nick's video and I didn't put this video up because I hated the way that this the other guy he was playing against. <sighs> we're both we're both really loud okay this video right here right i want you guys to see how his opponent scores a second goal so you guys just heard what stallion was saying right okay watch how his opponent scores his second goal here it's right i think it's right about here right here right here right i think it's this one boom that's it that should be your ball Manual tackling doesn't get rewarded. His player falls to the floor. He doesn't get the ball, right? What happens is as this guy continues to play, Cannavaro is now out of position, right? Which is what I explained in this video right here, which I didn't put up because I hated the way that this kid played, right? I'm explaining it, blah, 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 that he's out of position now. And I didn't even know that this guy scored after this, right? This is me reviewing the video live. And then what happens right afterwards? Cannavaro is now out of position, right? He takes the touch and just shoots it from from something that he didn't deserve, right? The, there's no there's no like concept. Oh, like, like hey, I looked looked like I manually defended really well. No, 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 no. You don't get rewarded for it, right? So that's what Stallion is trying to say. Oh, and so it takes you three to four decent tackles to get the ball back. But on the flip side, today's video, I'm going to show you three clips, three levels, or whatever. How many clips? which showed three different levels of how tackling someone from behind is, in my opinion, way too easy, way too overpowered, and allows for lazy tackling to go unpunished. So the irony here is, of course, that a good tackle from the front or a good angle, in my opinion, has less of a chance to work than a tackle from behind, than a shove from behind. And that's due to the different mechanics in the game, right? You can uh, A tackle from behind can be effective because shielding in this game is not good and that's level one of how tackles from behind are good level of uh, tackles from behind can be good because of poor touches in this game because of the awful gameplay that we all get the inconsistent gameplay which is something that you know inception talks about way more i i refrain from talking about that because he's done plenty on the subject but that goes without saying in all my videos right that we have inconsistent gameplay um so because of that gameplay tackling from behind is good and then obviously level three there's specific there's a specific clips you need to see to understand that. Now in this first example, I want to talk about level one tackles from behind as a result of the now useless shielding mechanic, which I understand. FIFA 17 shielding was overpowered. You don't want to have a situation where it's that overpowered, but at the same time, it's now completely useless. So I mean, overall, the balance of protecting the ball, whether or not it should be as a result of a shielding mechanic. I know some people just think it shouldn't be in the game, but at the same time, you should be able to push off an opponent from behind, especially if you're Perisic with Hazard coming from behind you. And as you can see, Hazard, Perisic starts looking to the left as opposed to keeping his butt out and just pushing Hazard to the side, which opens up the opportunity for Hazard to take the ball. And if we zoom in and we slow it even more down, you see how, like, even though I'm pressing L2, which I can't prove, but it's a reflex ever since FIFA 17, Perisic's legs are all the way back, whereas Hazard's already committing up top. So there's no way for the defender to shield off the opponent m many times, and there's no way for, uh, not even the defender, sorry, the ball holder to shield off, and there's no way for me to push my legs out faster than the contester is trying to get to the ball. So at the end of the day, with shielding being bad and with my the guy receiving the ball not really running towards the ball, there is nothing I can do in relation to the defender. And so Hazard comes away with the ball, um, and it's 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 unfortunate. But you know, some people might think this is fine. Uh, it's just unfortunate in the sense that the tackles from the front will work less than this type of thing, right? It's true. But this is only level one. Like I just one. showed you guys. If we go to level two, level two are, you know, tackles from behind as a result of poor 
useless, senseless touches. And here we have a ball from reeling into my chalit, and his chalit is marking my chalit. It's a chalitception here. And, mm. you know, I'm holding L2, and my idea is like, all right, he's on me. I want to take a touch in this general direction. I just want to move this way and then see what I can do, right? Maybe repass it back or something. But what ends up happening is actually my chalit yeah. takes a touch they do that his a lot. back heel, um, which makes no sense, right? Because if I'm going to go this way, why are you taking a touch with your back left back heel, which puts the ball between you and the other chalit, right? It's like it, it doesn't make sense why you would do that. So if we look at the it. The least they could do with the shielding is this, right? The initial touch in this situation, the initial touch in this situation, uh, a player in real life is not going to get this. You could even be, le you could be a small player, and as long as you touch the ball and are shielding it, you're fine. It's after you shield it and after you dribble it, which is what should allow you to get the ball. Right, so it should allow you to do that initial stuff first, right? Uh, especially in a situation like this, because this looks like an authentic area to do the shielding. You shield the ball, touch it, or not touch it, or pass it right away, or touch it right away, but then make it make it possible for the other person to get it, because then you don't want to make it overpowered, right? Because if you do that, you'd make it overpowered. If the transitioning is good with the defenders left and right, then after the person does the shield and then dribbles afterwards, then it should be easier for you to get the ball. Right? It shouldn't be like a concurrent thing that someone could just shield the whole time. Because as you guys know, even in FIFA nowadays, or even the FIFA's before, the reason why they did this is because if you just held all trigger, your player would just basically hold the ball the entire time. But in real life, the player will have a tussle, use his arms to get through the person to get the ball. But in this, he's doing it from the initial touch, right? It zoomed in, boom, right there. He did that sort of fancy thing where you try and like half Cruyff turn to the other side or whatever you want to call oh, it. Mm -hmm. And so the ball is now within Khalid's reach. When I'm pressing L2, I'm going this way. But, you know, maybe the game plays bad, so it doesn't register. I don't know what's going on, to be honest. But at the end of the day, this happens. I think when it comes to this video that he's making, I think this is more in regards to bad gameplay than good gameplay. Because shielding and good gameplay is actually pretty solid. And it actually makes sense where it's not overpowered. But... Good gameplay is very rare, so it's hard to 100% judge this video, you know? All the time, and there's no reason for me to lose the ball in this situation. So level 2 adds on to the poor shielding mechanic, but it adds on the shielding mechanic the poor touches. So the touch goes backwards as opposed to... I think this video would be pointless if the gameplay was consistently good. Because it, the shielding actually is kind of nice in good gameplay. And it actually makes sense. It's not like overpowered. Right? You could shield, you could shield so that the person, because I really think, I really, really believe this is because of bad gameplay. Because the way that they shield in good gameplay is they will put their body ahead of the ball and then the dribbling will be responsive so they'll do it right afterwards. But then it's no longer overpowered because you have to pass or dribble or whatever. But the person, because of good gameplay, can transi transition left and right perfectly and accelerate into the spot perfectly if he thinks you're going to go a certain way. Very, very good balance there. So that's the only reason why I would say this video is pointless, only if the gameplay is consistently good, but it's not pointless because this is the gameplay you consistently get most of the times. In this general area and I get, uh, I lose the ball. And now at level three, I have this chance because in my opinion, level three is like the most annoying. They do it really smoothly and responsively when the game plays smooth. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with shielding being bad or not as good as it should be or whatever you want or tackles uh, being effective from behind because poor touches. It's none of that. It's just a matter of pressing tackle when really you have no right to, right? So here I'm running with Eusebio, and I'll tell you right away, I'm gonna do a Burba spin, and there's there's a window of opportunity that you can tackle me on before my Burba spin, and if you miss that, for the video game to make sense, the next opportunity you should have to get the ball is when I exit the skill move, right? The whole point of the Burba spin is that you, while you're in the motion, you've shielded off someone, right? But even though that sounds overpowered, it, it's not overpowered in the sense that you have plenty of time. He's right, because if you make the tackle, you are predicting that he's gonna move this way or this way or this way, right? If you make the tackle. You could, however, hold your ground, and if he does the verba spin, have an animation where you can transition, collect the verba spin, and go. But if you know that the person's gonna make the tackle here and you do the verba spin, yes, like he said, the other opportunity of you being able to attack the ball should be after the skill move is, uh, skill, after the exit of the skill move.
time before. And if you read it, you can easily predict when he comes out and you yes. have all the time in the world. If your gameplay is good and you can transition left and right properly. If your gameplay is bad, your players are on ice skate. So that's 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 the problem with making gameplay videos in this game. To press L2 and jock into the position where he... I always had this conversation with people, right? It's like, oh, which gameplay did you like the most? I'm like... What are you talking about? I mean, there's like five or six different gameplays every single year of FIFA. What, what, what? You can't say, oh, I like FIFA 15 gameplay. Which gameplay did you like in FIFA 15? Which gameplay did you like in FIFA 16? A lot of problems disappear when your gameplay is good. This shielding thing he's talking about, I'm telling you, is really good when it's good. Very well balanced. He exits. But look what happens. He tackles me midway through my Burba spin, and I put this at level 3 because it doesn't make sense for the video game to tackle me in be, in my motion like it doesn't make sense it it just makes this skill move completely useless which i know was overpowered not in to mention i don't know who's gonna move like this in real life move to your left and then stick out with your left over there on the skill move that's awkward when you're running from right to left here but i think they did a good job of balancing it out in years after that um, and now you have a lot of time pre burba spin and post burba spin right here, right? What I would do as soon as I see my opponent do a burba spin, what I do is okay, I start jockeying and I move this way. Transition. And I'm now standing here. Only in good gameplay. Ready to stop his exit. Yes. But right now, all you gotta do is just tackle mid motion. And I think while it makes sense that you can go through his legs from behind. With how defensive AI is this year, with how bad gameplay is this year, with how touches are this year, you already have no time to take a touch against someone who's crowding the box. You already have no time to to weave and bop inside someone's box again when they're playing drop back, when the gameplay's bad. We don't need more things like this in this game, right? This would have made more sense last year in FIFA 18 yes. where, where close dribbling was extremely overpowered but in this fifa to tackle me right there mid burba that's too overpowered you now have like there's no way to, <laughs> to dribble around someone's someone's player with how touches are this year but like i said that concept also doesn't exist because of the way that this game is set up it's the way this game is set up because of the inconsistent gameplay i'm telling you I'm telling you guys, he can transition perfectly fine when the gameplay is good. There's no animation for the Burba Spin, which they should obviously add. There's no animation for the Flick Ups. There's no animation for the Croquetas. Uh, you could, even if you can transition, it, there's still no animation for those. But I get what you're saying. How gameplay is this here? But yeah, that's going to be that's gonna be it, boys. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you also feel that when you... Subscribes to his channel because he knows what he's talking about. Peace out, dudes. Love you guys.